but how have the past few days been for you? Uh, it's been it's been a bit of a whirlwind. Uh, um, you know, I I don't think my feet have yet touched the ground, uh, uh, and it feels good. I, I hope they never fully do again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you. I can't imagine standing on that Tony stage and just looking out to the crowd, seeing all these Broadway stars, and it's just like you're accepting your award. How was that feeling for you? You know, it's very funny. I, I had two moments of where I was just sort of having an out-of-body experience. The first one when I was climbing the steps up to the stage uh, and I was taking off my mask. My, the, I, I remember thinking, I'm like, oh my god, I just won a Tony Award, and then, <laughs> and then I'm I'm on the stage uh, and I'm in the middle of my speech, and I I just re I remember thinking, you're very calm right now. But I was very impressed. I was very impressed with how calm I was. I, I couldn't believe how like collected I was because um, uh, you know I, I you never know how you're going to react in a situation. <laughs> It is interesting. And they never sit you down and they say, now listen, if you ever win a Tony Award, this is how you should behave. Um, so, um, yeah, it was, um, but it was, it was really great. And, you know, the thing that was so cool too, is that um, the, the two presenters, Andrew Garfield and Robin de Jesus are friends of mine. So it was like to get, a, to get the Tony from them was just like, it was just, it, it, you know, um, I have a copy of the envelope just to prove that the fix wasn't in. <laughs> Oh, that's incredible. I love that story so much. And you're a Panama City native. So it's incredible to see somebody like you get to this point. Tell us about your upbringing. You know, my parents are originally from uh, New York City and my dad was uh, for a time stationed at Tyndall Air Force Base uh, before, long before I was born. And then um, they they stayed in Panama City and I, my brother and I were born and raised there. And uh, you know, the thing that was um, really, really impactful for me growing up in Bay County was um, the arts scene in, in Bay County. You know, um, uh, first it was uh, Rosie O'Bork and the pot of gold players that I was involved with when I was a kid. That was the very first thing that uh, sort of lit the fuse for me. And then, um, you know, later I started doing shows at Kaleidoscope and, and getting to know them and and uh, Charlie Wilson, who we, I miss so much, and um, and Sue Webb and Ina Jean Plum and David Garcia. I mean, this is just like my extended family growing up in Panama City. And so those people and Rosie and Rusty over at, at, at the school were just, um, they were the very beginnings of my, my journey toward Sunday night. And um, I honestly have to say that if there's any heartbreak in Sunday night, it was that Charlie Wilson wasn't uh, around to see that because I think he would have really liked that but um, I'm very grateful that so many others got to see that and that I got to um, experience it. Yeah and I actually spoke with your old friend Jason Hedden yesterday. Oh uh, Jason. <laughs> right? Met him in high school. <laughs> and we talked a lot about y'all's experiences together and especially at Gulf Coast State College and you know you both went to South Florida. Tell us about your college experience. You know Jason and I were roommates in Tampa, and um, and it, it it was there that I learned uh, to take risks. You know, I think the thing that you know, I'm really grateful that I studied acting in college, even though I really just sort of had no business being an actor. Um, I found that out a little later, but you know, one of the first things they teach you in acting school is 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 how to make yourself uncomfortable, and it's you know, it, you cannot be uh, a, a successful actor without frightening yourself a little bit. And, um, you know, it, it, it was a valuable lesson that they that they taught us at USF. And I I took that with in, into the world with me as a writer. And, um, and I wrote, you know, with the inheritance, I, I, in many ways, I wrote the things that frightened me. And, 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 and you know, because of that too, that I, I was actually able to help these actors um, with with their performances as, as the writer of the play, help them um, make decisions that 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 frighten them. I think my one of my I mean I'm very very proud of winning the Tony myself for best play. Um, and the thing that is I that I'm almost e almost even prouder about is is Andrew uh, Andrew Burnap winning the best actor Tony for playing this role um, that I created uh, of Toby. I mean, I'm very happy for Lois as well. Um, uh, but Andrew 
Toby is a role that that comes from me, comes from my experience. And he and I spent years, years crafting the role together. And, and I spent years watching him grow as an actor and frighten himself and challenge himself. And I think all of that does come back to, to your question of like, what did I learn uh, in school? I learned, I learned how to take chances and I learned um, how to, um, uh, to really sort of push myself out of my comfort zone. I love that. That's a great story for sure. And I want to know more about how you put the inheritance together. It's obviously a two-part epic, several hours long. I know it took you longer than several hours to make the play, to write the play. (laughs) Tell me about it. Well, uh, you know, it started with um, the novel Howard's End by Ian Forster. When I was a teenager, um, the movie came out uh, with Emma Thompson and and, um, Anthony Hopkins and Vanessa Redgrave. And I, I didn't know much about it, but I had read that um, Emma Thompson was gonna, like she was sort of favored to win the Oscar for it. And I, I asked my mom to take me to see it. I was curious about it. And um, there, there was something about that movie that really, really spoke to me. And it was weird because, you know, here I am this Puerto Rican kid growing up in Panama City, Florida. And this is a story about a bunch of white people in in England in, in 1910, um, um, sort of bickering over real estate. <laughs> and um, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't occur to me that what I was responding to was the author himself, E.M. Forster. And the more I got to learn about him and his writing, and I found out that he was gay and closeted all of his life. And um, I, I realized that that was the connection. And so I started to imagine this play. And, you know, uh, Howard's End is about three families from three social classes. And, and uh, the inheritance is about three uh, generations of gay men, and um, and it's all centered around the impact of of the uh, AIDS epidemic in the eighties and the nineties, and and so I, um, you know, I started. I think I had the idea. I found an old email the other day. I found. I I, I think I had the idea back in two thousand eight. I didn't start actually writing it. Um, I didn't start putting it together until about twenty thirteen. And from the moment I sat down to really outline the thing, and that's when it occurred to me that I was writing something larger than one play could hold. And it just started to find its natural state in the world. And I was very fortunate that I had a lot of support, both institutionally from theaters and also individually from great artists like Stephen Daldry, the, my director and, and now my dear friend. Um, and it was, you know, it wasn't easy, but it was never hard because it was always, always uh, supported throughout the, the process. And it was just, it was a slow, methodical, painstaking, very, very tiring and exhausting six year experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. Cause obviously, you know, not only, not only have we won lots of awards, which is always nice, but we've, we've I, I hear from people regularly who tell me what the play means to them and how it's changed their lives. And that's, that's worth every sacrifice that I had to make to work on it. Absolutely. And then also it premiered in London a couple of years ago. How was the process of getting it onto Broadway in New York City? You know, the thing about Broadway is it, it, the, <laughs> talking about Howard Zen being about real estate. Broadway is often just about real estate. I mean, it's about much more than real estate, but often it comes down to real estate. And that's just simply there are X number of theaters available. And when you when you consider the fact that Lion King's been running for 20 some odd years and Phantom's been running for 30 some odd years and Chicago has been running for 25 years, it's fewer theaters than you think. Right. And so you've got a lot of plays and musicals wanting to come to Broadway that are vying for a handful of theaters every season. And not, not only that, but musicals are usually favored over plays because they have a better chance of succeeding financially, right? So it's a business. We got very lucky in that we were successful in London. You know, we, 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 we sold out at the Young Vic. We, we, we did really great business in the West End. We won every award in the West End, which is always a good thing. And people were really supportive of the play. And so we ultimately had less trouble than most seven hour plays about <laughs> gay men and HIV uh, getting to Broadway. And we had the, the amazing Schubert organization who owns half of the theaters on Broadway really, really behind us. And so when the, when the right theater became available, we were given it and, and, and that's when we went. 
That's really interesting. I never knew what that kind of process was like. So that's cool to hear from the source. Yeah. <laughs> and then also, Matthew, what's next for you? Uh, I heard you're going to be working on the adaptation of The Bodyguard. Uh, so does that mean the Oscars next? Maybe even an <laughs> EGOT for you? <laughs> um, yeah, that Grammy is going to be hard for a playwright to get, I think. But um, I need to obviously you can I, find a I way. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, what I need to do is, is make a polka album and 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 get that Grammy that way. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm working on a couple of film projects. Um, and most recently, um, I started working on this on this remake of The Bodyguard, which has been so much fun to, to be given the uh, the opportunity to, to reimagine and to take something that is sort of like pretty classic cinema from from my from my youth and rethink it um has been a great and, and the, the Warner Brothers who's making the film they just sort of gave me a, an empty playground and told me to you know build whatever I want on it and they've given me so much support and 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 leeway to create my own version of the bodyguard and so that's been a lot of fun and so that's what I'm working on right now.